Hey there fellow sea glass lovers, thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Jackie and today I am quilting. So if you follow me on YouTube, you know that I really like to quilt, I really like doing sea glass mosaics and I really like to paint. So I've all, I'm always presenting you with something a little bit different. So today I am in the mood to quilt because I always like to work with sea glass. So if I quilt, I embellish my quilts with sea glass. If I paint, I embellish my paintings with sea glass. And of course, sea glass mosaics are just all about the sea glass. So in this workshop, I'm going to show you all the steps that you need to complete this four inch by six inch quilted card that's embellished with sea glass. And I'm going to show you the pink one. I'll demo on the pink one, but I'll also show you the green variation and the purple variation. And this is so much fun. These cards, once you get going on them, it's quite addictive. You can write a note on the back of the card and it's like having a greeting card and a gift all in one because you get this little piece of art that reminds you of the beach. So I've been making a lot of these lately. Some are a bit bigger than four inches by six inches. Some are a little smaller, but I've made quite a few recently. So stay tuned till the end of the video and I'll show you a slideshow of all the ones I've made recently in the hopes that it offers some inspiration for you and some different ideas of what you can do with fabric and sea glass combined. Now in the past I did a workshop like this to show you how to make this sea glass card with a sea glass sailboat and I'll post a link to that here in case you're interested. But I also put together a kit for that one that includes everything that you need to make the one card and it also gives you all the instructions, the pattern, all the fabrics, the whole bit except the thread. You can supply your own thread. And I decided I'm going to make a kit as well for this one. So either in pink or purple or green. So you can find those on my website if you're interested, JackieTrimperSeaGlass.com. So this project, there are 10 steps to complete this card. So let's get started. We got a lot of work ahead of us. So these little cards depict a seascape and you've got at the beach in the foreground and then you look out over the beach and the water and you can see the horizon line and then you've got a nice sky with some birds flying in the sky. There's some seagrass and some beach treasures at the front and an anukshuk. And a lot of people don't know what an anukshuk is and what it is is it's a pile of stones that the Inuit used to use whenever they were traveling as a way to show where they left a cache of food or to show where they were along the way. And to me, the symbolism of the Inukshuk is really important because it's a reminder that I was here. And I think we all need to be aware that when we pass through this life, we leave marks behind us that show we were there. And we really need to be conscious of what's the mark that we're leaving behind us. So I use the symbol of the Anukshuk a lot in my work. Whenever I do a sea glass piece, I always put an Anukshuk in it. Sometimes it's hidden off really small. Sometimes it's really um, big and in the forefront of my piece. And in this, these little pieces, the Anukshuk is big and in the, the forefront because it's all about the Anukshuk. So I, that's why I use that symbolism in this piece. So this project, just to let you know the techniques that we're going to be doing, it's raw edge strip piecing, raw edge applique. I'm doing some couching to put the yarn on. There's some embroidery and some beading, quilting of course, because we quilt the pieces on, and then attaching some treasures. So I really hope that all of these different techniques will give you the skills that you would need to make all sorts of cards like this or all sorts of quilting projects. So the first step is to gather up all your materials. So you need fabric of course. So I've cut a number of strips of fabric all in a pink color wave except for the blue strip because I really like to have a dark color for the horizon line. Just a little sliver there of blue denotes that horizon line very nicely. And I've cut these five inches long and I need a piece of nice 
fabric for the back. I like to use a combination of hand dyed and commercial fabric and I find the hand dyed fabrics on the back are just lovely. So I usually put a hand dyed fabric there. You need a piece of fusible webbing that's four inches by six inches. This is wonder under but you don't you can use any fusible webbing heat and bond or any of them work. So that's up to you. You need a piece of batting that's a little bit bigger than four by six. And you need a piece of four by six Pellon stabilizer. This is really thick, heavy material that's fusible on one side. And I find these fantastic. They just really make the card stiff and sturdy. They just, it makes, it's perfect. The perfect material for this project and you need a little piece of brown fabric for the anukshuk and again a little piece of fusible webbing for that as well and I have some yarn to do the couching I've gathered up I have some embroidery floss I like the uh, darker color embroidery floss for my little embellishments there and I've gathered up some beads I have some pink ones and gold ones, and I have some sea glass, a little pebble, a little shell. All of these things are going to add to some interest to the bottom here at the beach. And I need thread. So I like to use variegated thread to do the quilting, but you don't need to, do, to use variegated. You can use whatever you like. And use a solid color thread to do the binding. This is a zigzag stitch on the binding. So that, if you use a variegated thread for that, I have done that before and I haven't liked the look. So I like to use a solid color for that. And then I like to have a marker to mark on the back. And this, the Sharpie markers work really well. And I find they don't run or bleed or anything. So Sharpie markers, I like to use a coordinating color. Sometimes just black is perfect. And I like to have, I like to use my Quick Seal Kitchen and Bath Adhesive Caulking for gluing on the beach treasures. You can use a fabric glue, you can use any glue you like, except be sure to use one that's clear because if it's not, it's gonna show and not look as good. And the other thing I always have is a pattern. So here's my pattern where I've planned out where I'm going to put the different things and it also gives me an outline for tracing my nukshuk and the whole bit. So I'm all set. And I've also gathered up all those same materials in purple. So I've got a tray of purple stuff to make my purple card. All the same things and then all the same things in green. So I can, I have all the materials that I need to make my three cards. So step two, take yourself over to the ironing board and prepare your backing. I always like to do this before I get started. So then when I'm ready for the backing, it's ready to go. So take your piece of Pellon one-sided fusible stabilizer, put the sticky side up and put your fabric on top of that. Be sure that your fabric is sticking out all the way around the edges. And then you press that. And then the fusible sticky stuff that's there gets activated by the heat of the iron and your fabric sticks to the backing perfectly. Plus it flattens that piece of stabilizer down. There you go. Then you take that over to your cutting board and just cut off all the excess fabric. So there you go. I have my backings already. My pink one, my green one, and my purple one. Now the next step, step three, is to prepare your beach scene. So what I'm going to do is take my piece of batting and my fusible webbing and put it down, put the sticky side down onto your batting. Be sure to put the sticky side down or you're going to have a mess on your iron because remember the heat from the iron activates the glue in the fusible web. So I'm going to just press that on to my piece of batting and I'm going to wait for a couple of minutes for that to set. Okay, that has set, so now I can just take the paper and peel it off the back. 
If you try to peel it too quick, then it's going to stick to the paper and not to your batting. You want it to stick to your batting. Now the next step, I'm looking at my sample piece here, and I want to arrange my pieces of fabric on the batting. So I like to arrange my fabric from the top down. So I'm going to start with my sky, then my horizon line. Now I like to cut my fabric a little bit wavy. I like my horizon line straight, but after that I'm going to have my pieces a little bit wavy. And I'm just going to arrange these going down, going down my seascape. So if you'll notice here, some of the fa all of the fabrics have the bottom part of them sticking, are going to be sticking to the sticky part of the fusible web. And the top part's going to be loose. This just adds a little bit more texture. So once I've arranged that on there, I'm going to take my iron and press. and the heat from the iron is going to activate the other side of the fusible web and then the bottom part of each strip of fabric is sticking. See I can lift that up, it won't move and it's going to hold it in place for the quilting. So now I have my green seascape done and my purple seascape done and I can take myself off to the sewing machine so I can quilt all three backgrounds. So I've come over to my sewing machine. I put my free motion foot on, although if you prefer to do straight stitching instead of free motion stitching, then just leave your regular foot on. And I've put my pink variegated thread into the machine. Now what I'm planning to do is first I'm going to quilt the top of each strip to make sure it's in place. Because although it's secured well to the batting on the bottom, the top part of each piece is loose. So I want to tack that down first. And when I'm doing these pieces, I always quilt from the bottom and work my way up. So I'm going to go through the top of each strip first. And I just go back and forth because I'm using the free motion stitch. going to fill in the rest of the piece with free motion quilting. And there you go. And I'm not worried about the edges because all that's going to get trimmed off. And I didn't quilt the sky. I find with some of these hand dyed fabrics, the sky fabrics can be so interesting. And sometimes I'll quilt them, sometimes I don't. But for these ones, I'm going to leave the skies unquilted. So before you trim this to four by six, be sure to give it a quick press with the iron. So I've done that and I've just come over to my cutting board and got a measure and I'll trim this four inches by six inches. One of the things that I do try to be aware of when I'm doing a trim like this is to make sure that my horizon line is straight. So if it's not straight, you have a little bit of leeway in your cutting to cut it so that it does come out straight. So there you go, my seascape background is all done. And I have my green one all finished and my purple one all finished. Now on to the next step. So step five is to create the anukshuk. So I have my pattern, I have my little piece of brown fabric, my little piece of fusible webbing. It's a tiny little piece and I got a pencil here. So what I want to do is trace the anukshuk on the paper side of the fusible webbing. 
And this is where having a pattern is kind of important. So that way you get the figure that you're trying to create. This is raw edge applique using fusible webbing and you get the shape exactly as you want it. This isn't a very complicated shape, but for getting really intricate shapes, this works really well. Now I put the sticky side of the fusible webbing against the fabric, and I'm going to go over and press that really quick with the iron. So now my fusible webbing is stuck to my fabric, and I can just go and using really sharp little scissors, I can cut out the shapes exactly as I want them. And I can arrange that on top of my background. Alright, now before this is going to work, you need to peel the pieces of paper off. So this is where you just want to take the piece of paper, make sure that the fusible webbing is still on your fabric and get the, all the pieces for your nakshak lined up exactly where you want them before you put the iron on it. Because as soon as you hit this with the iron, the glue in the fusible web is going to be activated and it will make the fabric stick to your background. So I went over to my ironing board and hit this with the iron and the glue from the fusible web was activated by, from the heat of the iron and now my nakshak is attached to my background. So I have my pink nakshak, my green one and my purple one all attached to the seascape backgrounds. Now step six is to couch some yarn on because I want to create this seagrass here. So I've cut a length of brown yarn and I'm going to couch on three pieces of seagrass. I always like to do the long one in the middle first and then I use that as a guide for my two along the side. I'll do a double length of yarn here. So I cut that about that length and I put some embroidery floss in on a needle and I'm just going to couch that on. Now if you've never done couching before it's really not that complicated. You just I like to start at the bottom and I will do two or three stitches on the bottom to attach the yarn. I just find a couple of extra stitches here helps. I'm going to be binding it all the way around the edge so it's going to make it extra secure on the end. But I like to do that three times. And then I like to twist the two pieces of yarn together a bit as I go. And I just go up about every, I'd say less than half an inch and do a stitch. I don't want the stitches to be too close together or the this yarn is going to be too flat. I kind of like it to have a little bit of dimension. Adds a little bit of interest to your card. And I'm going to do that all the way up. So then when you get to the top do two or three stitches again just to hold that top in place nice and secure. Because each stitch on the way up I just did one stitch but I want two or three at the top to secure it in place. And then tie it off at the back and your one strand of seagrass is in place. There you go and tie it off. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing and add two more strands of seagrass on either side of my long one. So step seven is to just add a few more details using your embroidery floss. So you see these birds in the sky? So easy. It's just two stitches. So you go one stitch, 
for one wing and then another stitch. Then you do another bird. And if you make your stitches small, your birds are going to be farther away. And if they're big, the birds are going to be a lot closer. So the size perspective makes a difference. So I'll make a smaller bird up a, up a little bit further so it's further away. There, three birds in the sky. Now, if you want to make these strands of grass here, that's three stitches. So let's say I want to have a little tuft of grass right here. I just go one, two, three. Just adds a little bit more detail. And right here I've got some blanket stitch. So if you're familiar with embroidery, you'd know blanket stitch. So that's just where you go down. And when you bring your needle back up again, loop it underneath. And then you've got a bit of a blanket stitch. And that just adds a little bit more detail onto that line right there. And maybe instead of doing, like here I've got a row of blanket stitch, maybe you just want a row of grass instead of blanket stitch. It's not quite as heavy. So then you just do blades of grass. All of this just adds detail. And the more little details you have, the more interesting it is. And in a small piece like this, it's only a few seconds for each little detail you decide you want to add. And it just draws a person in to look a little bit closer at the piece of art that you've given them or that you've created. I give a lot of these away because I love to have a little handmade thing to give people. I also sell quite a few of them because I make so many. So step eight is to add a few beads. You don't have to add that many, but just a few can make such a difference because as soon as the light hits a bead, it just creates a little bit of a sparkle. It's kind of like the sparkle that you get when the sun shines off the waves out on the water. So I like to add a few of these little bugle beads out in the water, which to me the water is always the piece of fabric that is closest to the horizon line. And then the other thing I like to do is add some beads along the blade of grass. So for this one I have some gray or some gold beads rather, they're not gray, because I find the gold works really well against this color. And I have some pink beads. So I like to put some on the blade of grass itself. Whoops. And then I like to put some kind of flying off as if they're, it kind of adds a little bit of movement if you have little seed beads flying off your blades of grass because it makes it look like the wind has blown those little seeds off the plant. So I'll add a few of those around as well. This takes only a few minutes, not a whole lot of effort, but oh my, it makes such a difference. It's well worth the time to sew on a few beads, especially on a piece this small. Again, doesn't take very long. 
So the more little details that you add, the more texture it adds to your background and the more points of interest there is to draw a person in to look just a little bit closer. So I think that's all I'm going to do for this one. All right, so now I have lots of detail added to all three of the postcards. They all have some couching done with the seagrass and some embroidery and beads and I'm ready to move on to the next step. So we've made it to step nine. So this is where you want to create your binding. So you take your backing and you line your backing up with your seascape top. And this is where you want to take your sharp little scissors, trim off any little loose threads. Make sure that your top lines up perfectly with your back. I don't pin that or anything, I just hold it in place, but you might want to pin it. So I go to my machine, I have my walking foot on, I've put burgundy thread in the top and in the bottom. You want to use the same thread in the top and the bottom. And I am using a zigzag stitch and you set your zigzag to the maximum width and the minimum length. And then I just start to stitch. And I go zigzag all around the perimeter of my little mini art card. So there you go, you just trim off your threads and this binding has created a nice little frame for your piece of art. So I have my three art cards all finished and I have the backings attached, the green backing on the green one and the purple backing on the purple one. Now. I, the last step is to attach your beach treasures. So I like to use this quick seal kitchen and bath adhesive caulk. You can use fabric glue. Be sure whatever you use is clear. Just be aware that if you use glue, it's probably not going to stick over time because glue tends to dry up and fall off. So on each of these cards, I'm going to put a shell. I really like these round shells that have a hole in the middle. These are a little bit messy to put on. I find I usually get a little bit of a mess of silicone that I have to clean off, but that's okay. It's worth the effort. And then I'm going to put a little pebble on each one. I love these white pebbles. I find so many of these at the beach. And I just can't resist them. I usually have to pick them up. And each little card is going to get a green piece of sea glass, a white piece of sea glass, and a brown piece of sea glass. And I just find adding those few little treasures at the bottom of your card just makes it all that more beachy. Now that's going to take a little bit to set. But once it's set, it's ready to be gifted or used. And you can take your Sharpie marker. I like the Sharpie markers, but you can use fabric markers. And you can write on the back. I always like to sign my name. You should always sign your artwork. And then I'll write a note to somebody and gift it to them. And they're just sweet. So thanks so much for joining me for this video. I hope you found it interesting and I hope it really encourages you to try your hand at sea glass art and quilt art combined. 
And if you have any questions or comments, be sure to post them in the comment section down below. And stay tuned for my slideshow where I'll show you a whole bunch of these cards that I've made just to give you some more ideas and inspiration. And if you're interested in checking out my kits or my pattern for this particular workshop, you can go to my website, JackieTrimperSeaGlass.com. And until next time, I hope you make it out to the beach and happy sea glass hunting.